I'm Mari Cartel, LifeScript.com, and this is your Hollywood Health Report. Lisa Oz is the author of several books, including five New York Times bestsellers. She's the mother of four, an expert on marriage and relationships. Oh, and uh, she happens to be married to TV's top doc, Mehmet Oz. Now she has her own talk show, appropriately titled The Lisa Oz Show, and she's here with us today. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So you do have several books on relationships. So how much of that are we going to see within your new show? Well, it's a big part of it because the show is about living well and living fully. So that includes health and wellness and also relationships, spirituality, emotional issues, our space. So it's anything, um, that, and, and again, I'm not the expert in the show. I am the curious question asker and um, a curious consumer. So I have these great experts, people like Deepak Chopra, who will give advice on things like relationships. My husband, who can give advice on wellness. Um, Susie Orman, who gives advice on money. So um, it's, it's going to be a big part of the show, but um, whole, the whole show as a whole is very holistic. Growing up as a vegetarian, was that for health reasons, or was it spiritual, not wanting to be cruel to animals? What was the basis? Well, for me, a lot of it was, and then again, I was 14 at the time, became a vegetarian at 15, um, was environmental. My mother handed me a book called Diet for a Small Planet, um, and just the, the non-sustainable nature of eating a meat-based diet um, and the amount of natural resources it consumed, the air pollution, water pollution, um, deforestation that it's responsible for was a big part in my decision. Um, the health, of course, the, is important, but was not the motivating factor. Now it's really just part of who I am. It's not, I don't have, if someone said, why are you a vegetarian? I could give them reasons, but it's really just, if I said to you, would you like a bowl of worms? You would go, I don't eat worms. I mean, that's, that's sort of the way I that I am as a vegetarian. So no cheating though, right? Uh, hello, <laughs> look at me. No, I'm not a, a healthy eater without cheating. Chocolate is vegetarian, french fries are vegetarian, potato chips are vegetarian. Yeah, no, there are a lot of bad <laughs> things you can eat and still be a vegetarian. So obviously you do need protein and some people think you don't get enough or vegetarians aren't getting their protein. You can get plenty of protein even as a vegan, and I'm a vegetarian, so I do eat cheese and I do eat eggs. Um, so protein is not an issue for me at all. I'll tell you what is a problem for vegetarians, if they're not careful, is B12. So I get a B12 shot probably once a month, but if you can actually take it as long as you take it with intrinsic factor. B12 vegetarians do need to be careful about getting enough of. Could you see yourself ever becoming a vegan? I tried for six months and I was so grouchy. <laughs> All I wanted was, I was like, I can't have this stupid espresso with no milk in it. All I wanted was a single shot of milk in my espresso. Um, so I probably, I try not to eat a lot of dairy, um, but if I'm gonna have a coffee, I can't do it without a little bit of milk in there. So now I want to ask you, because you're a relationship expert. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I, I say 28 <laughs> years uh, of marriage actually <laughs> really does count for something. So you're doing something right in, in your own marriage. What are you doing right that we should be doing? Well, you know, I do a lot of things wrong and recover from it. It's like, I think Michael Jordan was talking once about all the thousands of foul shots he had missed. And I think part of it is just the recovery. It's the ability to admit that you've made a mistake, to um, apologize for those mistakes, and then move forward. So it's not about doing everything right. Um, but I do think that self-honesty is critical um, uh, for a lot of my marriage, and I think a lot of us in our marriages, we tend to blame the other person for whatever is not going right in our relationship. So if only they would do this differently, then everything would be fine, rather than examining our own role. And, and often we'll, we'll see what we're doing and admit to a superficial level of it, but it's only when we allow ourselves to become vulnerable and say, what's really going on? Why do I actually mind this? Why do I care what they're doing? Um, how is this hurting me? And then when you, it's, it's almost like becoming schizophrenic. Have an ongoing conversation with yourself all the time, that little voice in your head. 
asking what's really going on. When you can get that honest with yourself, then you can share that level of honesty with your partner. Oh, that's good advice. I don't employ it at all. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think so. Um, you know, I, I wanted to bring up your daughter, oh. uh, Daphne, because she is just a bundle of energy. She's lovely. Thank you. I think so, too. And when I've spoken with her, she actually explained to me that she did have a weight problem growing up. What did you do as a parent? Because it's hard as a parent to stop them from doing behaviors that may be a little destructive. But what did you do right that she tapped into? Well, part of it was just non-judgment, you know, and not always letting her know that she was beautiful no matter what. And she was. Um, but also, I, I don't want to demonize food in our house. Like, as I mentioned before, we love food. We love to eat. Um, I never wanted her to feel shame in eating um, or feel guilty around um, enjoying life's pleasures. So she... She really figured out for herself how to address whatever emotional need she had been meeting with food in a different way. I have yet to get to that point, <laughs> but she's um, she she did a great job of really transitioning to um, to uh, eating to live rather than living to eat. It absolutely shows, and you're you're going to be a grandma. I am. I am. We're so excited. That has got to be the best feeling in the world, to know you get to play and not have to do the work. <laughs> I, knowing Daphne, she's going to be handing me that baby. I'm going to be doing the work, too. <laughs> Are you prepping? Are you doing all the mom and daughter stuff with it? Well, we were just talking about designing a room so that the baby could stay there with us, where we're going to put the crib. So we just started those conversations. And I think that what really I find fascinating is now we've got three Oz's. <laughs> On TV. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's got to be like the family biz now, right? Um, sort of, but not really. Um, I, think, I think it's peripheral to the family business, which is really wellness, which is um, empowering people. And so whether that's through books or media, I mean, other media, television, radio, um, or in the OR, as my husband um, has done for years, or making healthy recipes like my daughter does. I think it's what we do is try to help people um, live more fulfilling, healthful lives. And media is just one aspect of that. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking time out with us today and letting us into your world just a little bit behind the scenes of your family life and you. And I wish you much success with your new show. Thank you so much. You can catch the Lisa Oz Show on the Varia Living Network. This has been your Hollywood Health Report from LifeScript.com. I'm Mari Cartel. <laughs>